Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this time we're going to continue bringing a scene to life with my Ardeo Jones work in progress scene. We're going to look at checkpoints and work on resetting a stage back to original until the checkpoint is met. That's enough intro, let's get to it. We'll focus on this short portion of the scene where Ardeo Jones has to traverse a perilous crumbling stairway into the Valley of the Ancients. Our first checkpoint is our entry point into the scene by default, and you can see that after we've died on purpose. We have an obstacle in the stairway, and we want to reward the player for successfully navigating it by placing a checkpoint beyond that, which will then respawn them after our obstacle. We also want to reset our obstacle each time the player does not successfully navigate it, thereby enabling the player to attempt the obstacle until they are successful. So we've seen what happens when you die before the obstacle, and we've seen what happens when you die on the obstacle. Let's quickly see what will happen if you get across successfully. When we die, we now respawn after the obstacle, and the obstacle does not reset. Let's see how we might accomplish something like this. Let's go into edit mode. I've tried to tidy up this as much as possible for the video. This scene is fully remixable, so you can check it out yourself in dreams and see if it all makes sense in there. Most of what we're dealing with is contained in two microchips, one on the obstacle and one by the checkpoint. On the obstacle to start, we're checking a couple of conditions to determine what will happen. We have a trigger zone set to detect the player and a motion sensor that detects when the obstacle is in motion. When each one of these is satisfied, something happens, and that something also happens when both are satisfied. When the player is in the trigger zone, a force applier is activated which causes the obstacle to move. I also activate a keyframe which changes the friction on part of the obstacle and that makes it more likely to slip and fall into the crevice. When the player is on the obstacle and the obstacle is moving, this activates a camera shake and a controller rumble to give the player some extra feedback. Also, when the obstacle is moving, regardless of player position, we'll play a couple of grinding stone sounds. We also have a microchip set off to the side, which is part of our obstacle logic, but it does not interact with any of the gadgets we've talked about so far. This logic resets the obstacle when the player dies if they have not reached the checkpoint on the far side. This uses a couple of wireless receivers that are getting a signal from some logic I've placed on the player character. The player receives a signal from each checkpoint and that causes a counter to increase. That number is then broadcast throughout the scene. In this way, anything set to receive that signal will know which stage is currently active, like our staircase obstacle. The staircase is looking to receive a zero to indicate that the first stage is active. If it does not receive a zero signal, the logic will not do anything, and so it's set up to only work when the first stage of the game is being traversed. I do this with a calculator set to equal zero. If the incoming signal equals zero, we get a signal out. If not, we don't. I also have a signal coming in from the puppet to indicate if it's dead. This means that a stage somewhere might need to be reset. If we combine those two conditions, our logic determines if this stage needs to be reset and then acts accordingly. That is accomplished with an AND gate. If those two conditions are met, a keyframe activates long enough to ensure that it does all the work that it needs to do via a timer. In this case, the keyframe returns the obstacle to its original position. Our other logic piece is the checkpoint. This is a trigger zone that resets the scene spawn point to it after the player has entered the zone in initial time. Output on this is hooked up to a wireless transmitter that goes to the counter we were talking about earlier, and that tracks the current stage. So when the player enters this zone, the current stage changes from the initial stairway stage to one that follows. Then if anything in that stage needs to be reset, the logic will be able to access that counter information to find out if action is appropriate. Now let's take a look at the scene in action to see if we can track what's happening with the logic in real time. We're on the obstacle and the obstacle is moving. You can clearly see RDO in the trigger zone. 
the trigger zone is active, the movement sensor is active, and because of that, the AND gate is activated. And you can see because both conditions are met, everything that can happen because of this logic is happening as intended. The logic reset is not active. We are in the proper stage. The calculator is outputting a signal, but the character is currently alive, so the AND gate there is not satisfied, and the keyframe is not yet activated. And by the same token, obviously we have not yet reached the checkpoint, so the checkpoint logic has not yet done anything. And also the stage counter in the character is still zero, as it should be. So let's continue in play mode. And this time we'll go ahead and die before the checkpoint to see what happens with the reset. The obstacle is back in place like it should be. Nothing is active with the movement sensor and trigger zone because those conditions aren't satisfied. And the keyframe to reset the obstacle is active because the timer hooked up to it is still running. Okay, now we've gone back into play mode and gone all the way past the obstacle into the checkpoint. The obstacle is leaning against the stairway, not moving, and RDO is not in the trigger zone, so none of those gadgets are active. RDO is not dead, so the reset logic is not triggering. Also, if we look at the calculator, it is receiving 1 as input, which is not equal to 0, so that is not sending a signal to the AND gate either. The checkpoint is active, that has sent a signal to the counter in the character, and if we look at the counter, it has indeed advanced to 1. Now let's go back into play mode, die after the checkpoint, and see what happens. Interestingly enough, our obstacle has reset, and that means we have a bug because that should only happen if stage 0 is active. If we check the calculator, it is receiving 0 from the wireless gadget, so something is wrong with the stage counter. And if we look at the counter, it's 0 when it should be 1. So what happened? Well, when the character died, all of these gadgets reset, that's what. This is an easy mistake to make and a good example. The stage counter is scene information and it has no business being in the character logic. So all I'm going to do is take the stage counter out of the character and put it someplace safe that won't get destroyed. What I should have done there is take all four of the stage counter gadgets out of the character and if you check the scene in Dreams right now, you'll see that's the way it is. So let's try one more time and make sure it's working properly. We're past the obstacle at the checkpoint. The obstacle has activated as expected. When we die, take a look back and the obstacle has not reset. So that was a good solution. So in this video, we talked about checkpoints and resetting a game stage based on certain conditions. Hopefully this helps you bring your scene to life and maybe make a game of it. More videos coming soon. I'm hoping to continue putting them out daily, but that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.